Peloton's a game-changing indoor cycling bike. Brings the Energy Alive studio classes to your home. Ride anytime you want. Learn more about the Peloton bike. OnePeloton.com. Visit your local showroom. Over 10,000 more rides on demand. Um, what what a day. And, and Peter King spent some time after the game uh, with uh, Tom Brady. I saw a picture uh, just this morning. And so we go via the Coward Global Satellite Network to uh, Peter King, NBCSports.com. Um, first of all, Championship Sunday was just crazy. Overtime games, absurd. Um, I saw the picture of you sitting with Tom Brady at his locker afterwards. Uh, what did he say? What did you ask? What was that about? Um, what did he say? Uh, he basically, Colin, I, I, I would say my one big takeaway from him. I'm Two big takeaways. Number one, he is truly not just kidding around. He's in awe of what he has done and what his team has done. Nine Super Bowl appearances in his 18 starting seasons. He just, he kept shaking his head about it. He said, it's just unbelievable. That's the one thing. Second thing is, I showed him a chart of Tom Brady's playoff games in his 20s and Tom Brady's playoff games in his 40s and how significantly better he's been in his 40s performance-wise than in his 20s. Uh, you know, he's 7% more better in completion percentage. You know, his rating is 13 points higher. But, but anyway, and I asked him about this, and I said, what does it say to you? And he looks at me, and he goes, Weren't, aren't you better at your job now than you were in your 20s? And I said, yeah, but I don't get beat up for a living. Right. You know, uh, but, but he just said, look, it's experience. And Colin, he pointed out the one thing, and I ended up writing about this Monday, but think about this, all right? It is the continuity of coaching staff that is, that is so important. Think of it this way. Brady told me they put in eight plays Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. That's six and a half hours before the game in an offensive meeting at the Weston Crown Center Hotel in Kansas City. They're doing a walkthrough with the eight new plays, four or five of which they ran in the game, and every one gained positive yardage. So that's one part, and I think they can do that because Ivan Fears, the running back coach, has been with Bill Belichick for 19 of his 19 years. Wow. Josh McDaniels, 15 of the 19 years. Dante Skarnicki, the line coach, 17 years. So that allows them to do so many things because these guys can all complete each other's sentences. No, it's a really good point. That's what I worry about the Baker Mayfields of the world and these young quarterbacks that come into a league and you have a different coach by year two and a different coordinator. It's very, very hard in life. If I had a different producer and a sidekick every six months, continuity is a huge thing. I want to go to the Saints-Rams game because I remember you writing about Jared Goff early in the year. You know, and people forget he was a number one pick. He went into a bad Cal program and really took a beating for three years and really carried Cal to respectability by the time he left. And you were saying in week three, we got to slow down here. This kid can actually play. Peter, I thought he outplayed Drew Brees in the second half and overtime of that game. Did, did you? He outplayed Drew Brees. He threw the three best balls in that game, in my opinion. Uh, the one ball to Brandon Cooks at the end of the first half, you know, that basically got the Rams back in the game, that drive. Uh, I just thought that he, he played fearless the entire game. I'm yeah. so impressed with him. Colin, when, when, uh, <laughs> when they were changing coaches two years ago this month and going to Sean McVay, you know, the, the, the brass went to golf and said, hey, listen, we're going to change coaches. And I mean, he already knew because they fired uh, Jeff Fisher late in the season. But we're going to be picking this new coach and blah, blah, blah. And he just shrugged his shoulders and he said, hey, this is just like when I went 1-11 at Cal. So I, I think he was not blown away. He knew that it was possible to improve with the right coach. Sean McVay is definitely the right coach. Uh, there's something in psychology called recency bias. Um, and this weekend in the New Orleans Saints-Rams game, the last blown call, everybody's blaming that 
on the outcome of the game because it's the last one you saw. Though we now on the internet have six or seven blown calls throughout the course of a game because football's fast and there's never been a perfectly officiated game. What do you make of the suggestion this morning that we should now consider reviewing pass interference calls, which seems to me would extend, would lessen the viewing experience and extend games uncomfortably long? What do you make of that? There's no way it would if they did it the right way. I have been in favor for years that every play should be reviewable. And I'll tell you why it would not extend games unduly. You would not do anything to allow to give coaches any more challenges. So the coaches would have the exact same number of challenges. And in my opinion, Colin, they would always keep one in their pocket for the end of the game so that you know, they knew that if there was a potential game-deciding play at the end, they would keep a challenge in their pocket. And they wouldn't be challenging the, the little uh, cheapo eight-yard completion in the middle of the second quarter. It wouldn't be worth it. Yeah. So, in my opinion, if you do that, you allow coaches to retain that one challenge for the emergency uh, challenge. And I wouldn't be in favor of adding any challenges. I'd be in favor of keeping it the way it is, but allowing them to challenge anything. Yeah. Listen, I, I don't think the NFL lacks integrity. I think they whiffed on a call, and I think it happens all the time. Peter, I said last week that if the Rams made... But, Colin, it caused the wrong team, it very possibly caused the wrong team to go to the Super Bowl. I understand everybody saying calls get blown every day, but there is a real honest-to-goodness reason to think that if this call was officiated remotely correctly, that the New Orleans Saints would be in the Super Bowl. That's too important to ignore is just another call. Finally, um, I said last week, the Eagles last year went heavy into free agency and trades and won the Super Bowl. The Rams went heavy high-profile trades and free agency this year and got to the Super Bowl. I think it's going to change the way free agency works in the NFL. I think March in the NFL is now going to become July in the NBA. And, I mean, I, that's my gut feeling is the Rams and the Eagles, this is a copycat league, free agency is going to become a huge deal in the NFL. Teams will be more aggressive. Agree or disagree? I think it will uh, for a couple of reasons. Number one, you look at the teams that are getting far in the playoffs now. Les Snead in the Rams. Les Snead never met a move he didn't like. Howie Roseman in the Eagles, unafraid of making any moves. You look a lot at John Schneider with the Seahawks. You look a at a lot of these teams that are bold in making moves. And a lot of these teams are winning. That's number one. I think number two, the other impact, in my opinion, is that it's very good news for Antonio Brown. <laughs> and it's very good news for Le'Veon Bell. Yes. It's good for big stars who have probably reached their expiration date with their teams. No, I, I think it's about my, my first takeaway during the break. You said Le'Veon Bell. And I'm like, God, he will. I mean, you, you start looking at Le'Veon Bell now and you got a Jets team that's got a young quarterback that needs help. And you got some young players in this league that need help behind them uh, at the running back spot. And no, I, I think it's a really good point. By the way, do you think Breeze's future, what is Breeze's future in New Orleans? I think it's good, but uh, Colin, the last seven weeks of the New Orleans Saints, they were at best a pedestrian offense. Yes. They scored 19.7 points a game in the last seven weeks, five regular season, uh, two playoffs. So Sean Payton has got to do a very hard, serious, no-holds-barred analysis of his offense right now. They've gotten the defense playing well. Yeah. But just when you thought that the offense was the state of the art, uh, you know, a little bit after midseason, it went downhill, and they got to figure out why that happened. Yeah, no, we actually, yards per play, which is a stat even Vegas cares about, they were fourth entering the weekend of the four teams. And after the weekend, even at home, they were fourth of the four teams that played. They're just not explosive enough. Peter King, NBCSports.com. Great having you, Peter. Finish your lunch. Sorry to interrupt you. Thanks, Colin. <laughs> All right. Um, don't let your age beat you. Feel stronger, more energy. BuyMDrive.com, code HERD. BuyMDrive.com, code HERD. No, I think, I think New Orleans is interesting because I had a scout tell me 
I, I picked the Rams to beat the Saints. I didn't do it because I'm in Los Angeles. I picked the Red Sox to beat the Dodgers in the World Series. I don't think, you know, I, I, I picked the Lakers to get bounced early in the playoffs. I don't care where I live, okay? I, I don't. I will say this, though, that when you start kind of looking at the Saints offense, I had a scout tell me this a couple weeks ago. He said there's arm fatigue with Breeze is that he's not throwing the ball as accurately downfield. They're, they're kind of a dink and dunk offense. And one of the reasons I like the Rams, I said, when you go on the road, it really helps to have playmakers. Well, Brandon Cooks made some big plays, the catch of the game over the top. Now, now New England, by the way, which I don't consider a team with playmakers, it should be noted that Gronk had two huge plays in the second half. He became their playmaker on the outside when they moved him. He's hard to defend. So there you go. Uh, Chris Hanes will join us. Uh, Warriors last night were unbelievable. But coming up next.